This lecture will examine the tissue level of organization in the human body. This lecture segment, part one of three, will begin the discussion of the four types of tissues, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and neural tissue with the epithelial tissue. Specifically, its form and function will be addressed. Recall that tissues are collections of cells and cell products that perform specific and limited functions. Histology refers to the study of tissues and there are four types, epithelial, connective, muscle, and neural. Cells in the extracellular material and fluids combine to form tissues. Epithelial tissue is the tissue that covers both internal and external surfaces and can also produce glandular secretions. Connective tissue is an internal tissue that provides structural support and stores energy. Muscle tissue can contract and provide movement, and neural tissue can conduct electrical impulses and carry information. Let's begin our discussion of tissues by learning more about the epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is composed of the epithelial, layers of cells covering internal or external surfaces, and derivatives of epithelial cells known as glands. Characteristics of the epithelial tissue include the cells that compose it are closely bound. The cells have a free or apical surface and a basal surface and are attached to connective tissues by a basement membrane. The tissue itself is avascular, meaning no blood vessels are present, and the tissue exhibits regeneration to replace lost or damaged cells. The epithelial tissue has many important functions, including it provides physical protection from pathogens, chemicals, abrasions, and dehydration. It controls the permeability. Anything that enters or leaves the body has to cross the epithelium. So by controlling permeability, the epithelial tissue can determine what gets in and what gets out. It provides sensations. The epithelial tissue has receptors that can relay information to the nervous system. The gland cells of the epithelial tissue produce specialized secretions either onto the epithelial surface, known as exocrine secretions, or into the tissue, tissue fluid or blood, known as endocrine secretions. The cells of the epithelial tissues are closely bound, both to each other and to the basement membrane. This aids in the protection that they provide. Cell junctions are specialized means of attachment and include tight junctions, gap junctions, and desmosomes. In tight junctions, membrane proteins link the plasma membrane from two cells together and prevent diffusion between the cells. An adhesion belt below or inferior to the tight junctions also helps keep cells attached to their neighbors. Gap junctions utilize connexions connexons, rather, membrane proteins to link cells. Diffusion of small molecules is allowed by these gap junctions. Desmosomes hold two adjacent cells together through transmembrane proteins known as cell adhesion molecules or CAMs, as well as proteoglycans. The apical surface of the epithelial tissue is the side that is exposed to either the internal or external environment. The cell's surface may have microvilli to increase the surface area or cilia to encourage the movement of materials over the cells. The basal surface of the epithelial tissue connects to deeper connective tissue at the basement membrane. The basement membrane is the site of attachment for epithelial tissue to deeper tissues. Stem cells found near the basement membrane undergo mitosis to produce new epithelial cells to repair the epithelium by replacing cells lost to or damaged by the environment that the tissue is exposed to. Epithelial tissue is classified based on the number of cell layers and the cell shape. The epithelial is either simple, composed of a single layer of cells, or stratified consisting of two or more layers of cells. Stratified epithelial tissue is commonly found in areas exposed to high stress where more wear and tear can occur, such as in the mouth. Cell shape can be classified as squamous, which are thin flat cells, seen here, 
cuboidal cells, which are box-like square shells when in cross-section, seen here, and columnar cells, seen here, which are tall rectangles in, cross -sectional, in the cross-sectional view. Again, you can see simple epithelial refers to a single layer of each of these types of cells, whereas stratified refers to multiple layers of those cells stacked upon each other, as seen here. When we speak of the apical surface of, a, of the cells, we are talking about the free edge, which I just highlighted in green. The free edge of the cell, the apical edge of the cell, will be what faces the environment. The basement membrane that connects these cells to the connective tissue below is here. Simple squamous epithelium consists of a single layer of flat cells. This tissue helps reduce friction, helps control permeability, and helps with, the absorption, and, with absorption and secretion. Simple squamous epithelium can be found in areas such as vessels, kidney tubules, the exchange surface of the lungs, and the lining of the ventral body cavities. Here is an example of simple squamous epithelium from the lining of the peritoneal cavity. The single layer of thin flat cells are tightly joined. Notice how there are no spaces between the cells. See the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. So this large purple stain structure here is the nucleus. The cytoplasm refers to the area around the nucleus. And then the cell membrane is going to be outlined, um, as we saw over there, as the outer edge of that cell. Simple cuboidal epithelium consists of a single layer of cells that look like squares in cross-section. This tissue provides limited protection and is found in regions that take part in secretion and, and or absorption, such as the kidney tubules, the thyroid gland, and other glands and ducts. Here is an example of simple cuboidal epithelium found in a kidney tubule. The cuboidal cells can be seen here. Notice the apical or free edge and the basal surface connected to the basement membrane. The large structure stained purple in the center is the stained nucleus. So here we have that basement membrane. The free or apical edge sits up here, and then that large purple stain structure here represents the nucleus of that cell. Simple columnar epithelium consists of a single layer of columnar cells that look like rectangles in cross-section. This tissue provides protection, secretion, and absorption, and can be found lining the stomach, intestine, gallbladder, uterine tubes, and collecting ducts of the kidney. Here is an example of simple columnar epithelium found in the intestinal lining. Note the rectangular cell shape and the microvilli on the apical surface. Once again, the basement membrane between the epithelia and connective tissue can be seen, as well as the nucleus and the cytoplasm of the cell. Stratified squamous epithelium consists of several layers of thin flat cells. The multiple layers of this tissue provide protection from stressors and can be found on the skin surface. Mouth, the mouth lining, the throat, esophagus, rectum, anus, and vagina. This example shows stratified squamous epithelium from the surface of the tongue. Notice the many layers of cells, the stem cells that sit near the basement membrane that will provide replacement cells for the epithelium. So again here we have many layers of cells throughout down here and we go ahead here and see an example of a stem cell that sits right at the base here above that basement membrane. That will undergo that mitosis, make daughter cells that will be able to replace um, lost or damaged cells from that apical surface of this stratified tissue. 
Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium consists of a layer of cells that looks like multiple layers due to the varying levels of the nuclei, but each cell has contact with the basal membrane. This tissue provides protection, secretions, and has cilia that helps move mucus. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium is found in the nasal cavity, the trachea, the bronchi, and the male reproductive tract. This example shown here is from the trachea. Note the levels of the nuclei and the cilia. So the cilia are these little eyelash looking structures that we see up here. Okay, so these all, I just highlighted part of them. Those are going to be the cilia. The nuclei are going to be scattered at different levels, which gives the appearance of being a um, striated tissue. Uh, which is not true, it's just the different levels of the nuclei in those different cells. So as a result, we have something that is not stratified. We call it that pseudo or falsely stratified um, tissue. Transitional epithelium is stratified and can stretch and recoil. It is found in the urinary bladder, the renal pelvis, and the ureters. The transitional epithelium shown is from the urinary bladder. We see the case where the urinary bladder is empty as well as when it's full. Note the difference in the shape and of the cells from the relaxed form where the bladder is empty. You can see the shells have more of a cubish type shape on the top and throughout. And then when the bladder is full and that epithelium is stretched, taking on more of a flattened, uh, flattened shape to the cells. The glandular epithelia refers to the epithelia containing a lot of glands. Glands can be endocrine or exocrine glands. Endocrine glands release hormones into the interstitial fluid and plasma and have no ducts. Exocrine glands release their secretions through ducts and include the mucus cells known as goblet cells. Secretory sheets are multicellular, multi, multicellular glands. Exocrine glands can have one of several mechanisms of secretion, including merocrine, apocrine, or holocrine. In merocrine secretion, secretory vesicles leave the cell via exocytosis. An example of merocrine secretion is the release of mucin, which forms mucus when mixed with water. In apocrine secretion, multiple vesicles congregate near the apical surface of the cell, and then this region is shed. This type of secretion occurs in mammary glands along with some merocrine secretion. The third type of secretion is holocrine secretion. In holocrine secretion, the cells fill with secretion and then burst to release them, dying in the process. Sebaceous glands found near the hair follicles use the secretion method. So again, merocrine will use secretory vesicles that exit the cells by exocytosis. Apocrine secretion will actually have the secretions form an up by the apical or free edge of the cell, and as a result, the cell will go ahead and release that whole area, including some of that cytoplasm. Uh, with the secretions. And then in the holocrine secretions, the cells will actually rupture and burst to release the contents uh, that hold the secretions that were produced. Let's review with a checkpoint. Can you identify the three cell shapes characteristic of epithelial cells? Feel free to pause the lecture while you formulate your response. The three cell shapes that are characteristic of epithelial cells are squamous, cuboidal, and columnar.